And it's Anthea Morfitis. Hope you're all doing good. Yeah, this one's going to be a little different. But again, guys, we're going to make it work because that's what we do. Um, so before I continue, guys, I want you guys to understand that today and tomorrow are going to be our last stream. We're taking a break for a week just to fine tune the podcast to give you guys the content that you deserve. Not only that, we're going to fine tune the platform. You're still going to get us four days a week, but we're going to, you know, we want to try to grow the channel and really focus on giving you guys value. And we're going to look at new ways to do that over this next week, which is all of next week. Excellent. And on that, can you hear me okay, Michael? Perfectly. Ah, excellent. And I can hear you perfectly as well. Yeah, quite exciting. I think that's what it's about, really, trying to um, make the best of what we've got and make it better and better each time. So, um, yeah, I was just well, saying... It, well, go ahead. I was going to say, I was just saying that, you know, you've got to understand technology because technology is a big part of this. And we do go live every time. So it's not, you know, there's nothing that has been pre-scripted or anything. It's just what comes to us at the time. And that's what makes it exciting and, and like such a, um, a cool thing to do because it's not pre-recorded. And it is, you just get who we are and what we're about in the moment. Yeah, exactly. And I can agree with that. And I think that's what our audience loves. Um, so um, I, hopefully you guys take a lot away from this one tonight, because I think this one's important for a lot of people. And as a channel, we're even still trying to figure out, are we a self-help channel? Are we a dating relationship channel? Or are we just a can channel that just likes to have relationships about uh, conversations yes. about dating and, and stuff like that? Um, so as I said, we want to try to fine tune to give you guys the best content because you guys are spending your time, your attention, your energy to watch us give you value. So we don't want to take that for granted and we want to make sure that it's the, uh, that it's well maximized time. Yes, absolutely. And today's uh, like, actually it's, I think it ties into our last podcast that we done. Um, I think of our last title now. You remember, Michael? Ooh. The negative. No, that was the one before. The last one. Oh, dear. Anyway, it ties into it and we'll get, and I suppose, oh, it was the nine, there was nine things that Stefan was breaking emotional. down. Emotional. Yes, an emotional woman. <laughs> um, and part of this is, I think, really leads on to that and from the previous podcast of, um, you know, how negative energy can be, can really bring you down so in what we're talking about today i think it's really cool because it everything ties together because i think it all comes back down to being able to control your own emotions and not be so reactive and even if people are being super negative um towards you or around you not to allow them to affect you and you know i've had something of late that that's been trying to come into my world and at first I allowed it to kind of get to me, but actually I don't need to because then I feel like by allowing negative people and words and energy to be allowed into my world, into my way, into my thinking, into my energy, then I'm allowing, I, I'm just basically allowing them to do whatever they want because I'm then giving my power to them to say, well, you're going to take over my thought process, my way of um, being, my uh, my feelings, my emotions, my energy. So that's what, and that's what you do when you allow that to take over. And yes, we're all going to have moments and we're going to be reactive to things. But I think if we can really control that and not allow that that heavy energy to come our way, then we claim our power and stand strong in who we are and don't uh, and not allow them to just kind of destroy you because a lot of people will try and find ways without even realizing they're doing it, trying to destroy your type of your character because they've got nothing better to do in their world. It's very interesting that you say that though, because like I feel like this episode is going to be very different because I feel like in this episode, we're going to hold people accountable and they're not going to like it. 
Mm, and it is about, you're very right, Michael, it is about um, holding yourself accountable. It really is about that. And I think that goes with every aspect on life. You know, if you're going to, if somebody, if somebody, if you're a person who is that person who goes to other people and tries to say things or do things or, or kind of be argumentative, then you have to take responsibility for your actions and how you're being, right? And a lot of they get up. A lot of people get upset when you don't react because they mm. want a reaction because they want drama in their life. So that's why they do it. And a lot of people are like that, Michael. You know. And actually, it's like start being accountable for who you are, what you do, and what you say, and how you be in this world. You know. Well, you see, that's where I'm going to add a little bit of a different spin on it. We can ask for accountability, but it doesn't mean that the person will be accountable. You Absolutely. see, that's the thing. Like, we might ask someone, be accountable for how you act, how you behave. Yeah, they might hear it, but it doesn't mean that they're going to do it. So no, and they the, will. Sorry, sorry. So on the reciprocating end, you are accountable. This is why I'm holding the person accountable, because you're choosing to entertain or deal with them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But you'll 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 find a lot of people will turn around and say that people who are being that way will say, "Yeah, but you're making me be like this." And no. it's like and you really break that down, Michael. Like, how can you make somebody be a certain way? You, like, it's well, like that's really... lack of control of emotions. First of all, absolutely. Um, what I would say when it comes to protecting your peace. And again, as I said, you guys might not like some of the things we're going to say tonight, but it's fine. You are inviting these type of problems in your life. Yes. It's like for hypothetically, like let's say you're friends with someone and you guys like get off on the wrong foot all the time. And you guys keep being in this friendship where you guys are on and off. Or like, let's say you're dating someone and you guys are on and off. Whose problem is that you keep inviting that problem in your life? Yeah, you keep allowing it. You keep allowing it to happen. you have to, to understand happen. that in this world, no one's going to feel bad for you. Mm. That's one thing that people do. People want people to feel pity for them. People want, to, people want people to feel sad for them. No one's going to feel bad for you. Because they're going to keep it moving. They'll be like, oh, it sucks for you. Keep it moving. Mm. Because Absolutely. you are inviting the problems. I'm not saying you are the problem. I'm saying you are inviting the problem. Yes, yes. Every time you entertain a problem, every time you speak about the problem, which is entertaining it, um, like, look, at the end of the day, we are humans, and it is good to discuss the problems that we have. 100% it's good to sit down and have a conversation. But it's how many conversations are you having about that problem? Because the more you speak about something the more it becomes you're just adding energy it's like you're adding more and more ingredients and making more and more of the mixture and it's becoming more and more and more so that's uh, that's a way of entertaining something so it's really about having a, a one-off conversation about a problem and really focusing on a solution what can i do and if a solution doesn't come to mind straight away then ponder on a solution and really think about a solution to what you can do next because i think when you stay when you stay in that problem you're just inviting more and more problems into your world and actually i said the other day um it's funny because I always know when my when I've got my focus on the wrong things in my world because I watch how quickly things can turn take a, a turn for I don't want to say the worst because that's quite a heavy word to say another a way to describe it but for not the not to how I know my world to be so but as soon as I take accountability for that and understand where my focus has been and what I've been speaking about and the problems that I've uh, had my focus and attention on, then I can, then I am able to say to myself, well, actually, Amphrey, it's you that's been doing that. You're the one that's talking about this stuff. Nobody else. Like, if you're speaking about it with somebody else, because you're inviting them to speak about it, you're giving them that option by telling them what the problem is and working and actually opening yourself up to that. So it's really about, like you rightfully said, Michael just serious accountability. Like you really have to be accountable for yourself, for your thoughts, for your words, for your actions, for your ways, 
for your conversations, for everything that you do. You have to take responsibility for it. See, I am all for having a conversation, but the thing is, it shouldn't have to get to that point because you should set the tone of how people should treat you. You set that tone by how you conduct yourself. Your, I personally believe your energy introduces you. Mm, so there's sure. some people that you can meet that you know that certain behaviors, they're not going to tolerate it right off mm. the bat. And they don't even have to say anything. Their energy and how they conduct themselves, you know that if you do something, they are going to jump on it real quick and squash it. Mm. That's why I'm saying that, yes, a conversation is had and we'll break it down into different experiences. Like with a friend, 100% a conversation should be had. But like when you're dating somebody, they should know where the do not cross boundaries are. They should have a, a, a clear understanding of what not to do and what to do. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so many... So many people fear to just be really true and say what it is because they're so scared they're going to lose someone if they if they say it. So they hold back. I mean, I've done it. You know, it's like mm -hmm. I don't want to say something because I don't want to hurt that person. I don't want to upset them, so I won't say something. Um, but it, obviously, you learn from that. But I think so many people are probably still in that kind of way um, because it's easier not to say something than it is to face up to something isn't it it's a lot easier not to say and and just to go along with it but it becomes a problem because you haven't said something well it depends on what you're saying and it depends on how it's being said but it's also understanding that if like as i said some people you know not to deal with them in that way you just know because you know that if you do like, let's say, for example, you are rude and crass with some other people. But you know, with this particular individual, they're not going to tolerate it. Mm. Yeah, because they set, they set the tone. You're very they right. They set, set the, the tone, tone. Of, of a level of respect. And yeah, you like always turn up. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I mean. Like, they set it without even having to say anything. Because if you yep. watch and you pay attention to human behavior and how people conduct themselves, Let's say, for example, this person is disrespecting three or four of their friends, maybe their partner, but then you know, like, there's this one person they know, they're like, I can't do that. I can't act that way with them. Because this person is constantly always protecting their peace. All the time. Doesn't mean that they, they when, when we mean protect your peace, it means they're always peaceful. They deal with conflict. They don't run away from it. They deal with conflict quickly and effectively. What are the solutions? They deal with it because they always want to protect their peace and get back to peaceful states of mind and, and resolve issues. It's just like as Stefan said yesterday, you're not running away from the issue. You're addressing the issue. Hey, I heard, you know, or yesterday I, I seen that you felt this type of way. Are you ready to talk now? But they're always trying to get back to peaceful ways because I've realized that a lot of times people let outside circumstances or what people do affect their state of mind or affect their state of happiness when it shouldn't be that way. What people do or say should not have an effect on your life. It only has an effect on your life if it's true. If you think it's true. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, how is that saying? Like, let's say somebody calls you stupid. It might not affect you, but let's say somebody that you care about calls you stupid, you might feel a different way. Yeah. It's you like there's a, there's a way, it's something that I've heard a few times where if someone calls you on the phone that you don't know and says, hi, I'm never going to call you again and puts the phone down, you wouldn't, you wouldn't batter an eyelid. But if someone you love and care for calls you and says, hi, I'm never going to call you again, then there's a different response and reaction to that, right? And that's, and that's what it comes down to. It's understanding yourself and what it is you're willing to protect because, and I'm glad we're doing this. Most people I realize don't protect their peace. No. And that's why they're living the lives that they're living. They're letting all types of chaos happen. They're, they're, sorry guys, they're letting all types of chaos happen. 
They're not addressing any of the issues. They're letting people come in and out of their life without apologies or like anything like that, like nothing. And it's like, no, like, look, if you want to come back here, these are the rules. Yeah. Yes. And it is, it is again, setting the tone from the beginning to not allow certain. To, and I think, you know, like we've, I think we've done a podcast before about being too nice. And I think, you know, when you're, when you're too nice, people do take advantage of that. They very they much always, take advantage they of that. They always will because they have the understanding. And again, this is not an There's attack no on There's no boundaries. Females, especially with females, they know you will always take them back. Mm. They know that you. They could leave for six months. Oh, I'll come back. Johnny will take me back. I know he will. Mm. When and then one like, day he says no. Exactly. And then and you're in he shock. says no. <laughs> because he values himself. He's actually found a place of peace. Mm. And that's what we're honestly trying to teach you guys is to be more protective. We're not trying to tell you to not be forgiving or not understanding, but you know, the thing is I can love you, but I don't need to be with you or I don't need yeah. to have you around. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what people don't understand when it comes to protecting their peace, because especially if this person has chaotic thinking, especially like, let's say they're always being the victim. They're always blaming other people. They're not taking accountability for inviting um, certain elements into their life. They're just like, oh, it's all their fault. It's like, well, yeah. you allowed it. Yeah. Take responsibility for that at the like, end of the you day. Allowed it. Like, like, for example, okay, you know what? I'm going to drop the hat out of the bag. One of the biggest issues that women tell me is they will serve a guy like a wife. They'll do wife things for him, but the man hasn't committed. Mm. And I'm and I tell them, nope. <laughs> so I'm sitting no, there like, don't do it. I know, but I'm sitting there like, cause like I'm not trying to judge. I'm trying to be the nicest person, but I'm like, you have emotional damage <laughs> because it doesn't make sense to me that you're doing all of these wifey things for him. You're cooking for him. You're having sex with him. You're serving him. You're being submissive. But he hasn't committed to you? Yeah, it doesn't make how, sense. How are you protecting your peace at that point? Because your peace is going to be interrupted and shaken at some point. Because if he hasn't if he hasn't said he wants to be in a committed relationship and you're doing all of that, then he can walk. And, and actually, when it comes down to it, that's where you really have to say to yourself, I have to hold myself accountable. Well, for no, this you already got I, at that point. At that yeah, point, but then you, you have to, but once, but once they've walked, I mean, as in once they've just gone, then you can't get upset because you got to yeah. hold yourself accountable for the for the fact that you've allowed that to happen in the first place. Agreed, and it's interesting because they're like in this situationship, like oh, but we connect so much. He's so yeah, wonderful, but that doesn't matter. And I'm like, that doesn't matter because he hasn't committed. Yeah. Once he's committed, that's when it matters. That's, because that's, that's what it matters. When he says, I want you to be my girl. But anything yeah. else he says before that is just whatever. It's the same thing for um, for, for a guy. If you're dealing with a girl, she's like, oh, you're so nice. You're so wonderful. You're this, you're that. But she hasn't committed to you. She doesn't like you like that. She'll take yeah. the benefits yeah. She'll take the attention, she'll take the time, she'll take the dinner dates, she'll take the gifts. But if she hasn't committed to you, or she doesn't want a relationship from you, then she doesn't like you like that. It's the same thing as the analogy we just gave. I've spoken to a lot of females, and they're like, oh, I really like this guy. You know, we're sleeping together, he's fantastic, you know, but he hasn't committed to me. And then they get in this long situationship, not protecting their peace. And this is where it, where this is where it gets so interesting. They think by doing more that it's mm. going to change the person's mind. Yeah, but that's with both sides. With a male to a female, oh, both a sides. Female. Yeah, like I'm people will both sides. they will try and do more and more. And then when you don't reciprocate to it, and you don't you you're not part of it, and you because you haven't committed to it, they get mad. 
and they try and do anything to hurt you. There's a lot of people that will try and hurt you because they're not getting what they wanted, what they set out to do, because they've taken you out, because they've taken their time with you. So because you're not, um, you're not committing to them, they will change and they will show their true self through it. People will always show their true self eventually. Like well, honestly. a lot of the females that I've coached, that's been the biggest problem. The guys don't commit and then they do more. Oh, I'm going to cook for him more. I'm going to yeah. have sex with him more. I'm yeah. going to do this more. And then maybe he'll commit. Yeah. You are not protecting your peace when you do that. No. No. You are, you are being more feeling based instead of logical based. Yeah, if I'm not he hasn't commit. committed by now, he's not going to commit later. It's the same thing with a guy and a female. If the girl doesn't want a relationship from you off the, like within like a, a certain time span, she doesn't want one from you later. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not it's not a bad well, thing. It's just how it is, right? It's how it is. <laughs> it's just how it is at the end of the day. And you don't know until you get to know someone anyway. Then you might just decide, I'm not interested, and that's the end of it. So, um, but some people like to carry on doing things and going out and enjoying each other's company, but they just don't want to commit to that. And that's right. fair enough as long as you're aware and you're happy with that but you, leave you don't them want alone. the commitment yeah leave, leave them alone. alone but if you both do, if you both want to be in that space and you both don't want a commitment and you just want to be oh i don't like to use the word using each other because everyone uses each other to a certain degree because but let's you know, be you have... honest majority of the time somebody wants commitment Let, let's be honest like yeah, most but, uh, of the yes. time it's yeah like absolutely. there's that small sliver where it's like okay we're just both single let's roll around in the hay but yeah. majority of the time, it's somebody wants something. Yeah. But say it's not that way, then that's fair enough. Like, that's, you know, that's fine too. That that's is, not, uh, really there's fun. never, it's neither here or there. But I think if somebody's not admitting and they're just trying to go along with it to see if they can um, eventually Jeez. change their mind, then it's not worth it. And you are going to, you are going to explode with your peace and your peace is going to be interrupted massively because it will come to a point where that person will find somebody who they do want to commit to. And it's not like, I think we've got to get over the fact as well, that it's not a personal thing. It's just that there's something for them that's not gelling with you that wants to spend the rest of their life. So it's, it's like, don't like so many of us get hurt like deeply by that. And actually you're again interrupting your own peace by allowing that hurt. Yes, obviously we're gonna feel our emotions, but taking it too personally, I think we really have to stop doing that. It's just got, you've got to look at it as an experience. Say, okay, cool. Well, okay, I, I do, do understand like why they take it that way because even though the person is not committing to them, they're still taking from them. Yeah, absolutely. But, but again, they're, they're allowing, allowing it. it. They're, they're allowing, allowing the taking the to happen. Yeah, exactly. But that's why I go back to the beginning of taking accountability for yourself. But, you know, it's really, it's a very difficult thing to do for people to say, I hold myself accountable for my life. And that means every part of my life. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people can't do that, Michael. And not because there's something wrong with them. No, it's just because we're not programmed and brought up to be that way. It's always to do with blaming others and it's like it's out of your control but it's not everything is down to the individual it's down to yourself um and when you I, really I agree with that and 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 I like that you said that though because I even believe that even when it comes to picking bad partners that's a you thing yeah, absolutely. And I've picked, like, I wouldn't say, but they're not bad. I can't say the word bad. But no, but in, they weren't suitable for you. But they weren't suitable. I th well, they were suitable for a certain period of time, absolutely. Otherwise, we would never have... No, what I meant, like, I'll, I'll would, word it better. Suitable where the relationship could go a long distance where you were still with them in the present day. Yeah, okay. So you got... Listen, not everybody that you meet is going to be your long term forever. So you have to have those. You don't have to have those experiences. Nope. But I think it is good to have those experiences before you meet somebody. Oh, actually, I can't say that. There's some people that have met someone from the age of 17, 18 and 50 years later, they're still together, happy and they've been through their time. So 
I, you know, I can't, I, I can't say that, but, um, you know, I can say it. I picked some people that weren't the best for me. Yeah, but they were the best for you at the time, Michael. But even at the time, it's like you also have to take yourself out of it because then now it's like you're saying, well, I've built up all these um, dating options or people at that time. Yes, it didn't work out, but now I'm in a better place. It's like you could have just avoided the whole thing if you just would have admitted to yourself. That's where we suffer a lot. It's just yeah, saying, but that's where growth comes in. I, I, yeah, I kind of disagree 100%, with that. But like, I think at, at the same time, like, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like, it's like we know internally, we know this person's not for me, but we're still like, well, I'll give it a chance because what if it does work? It's like, no, don't admit to yourself. It's not. It. it they're not for you, and move on. Yeah. No, I get that, but I still think that life does need those experiences um, it, it to help does. you when you do find some that you really, does. yeah, you can really say, okay, I went to that buffet and I didn't like this, I didn't like that, and now I really do know what I want out of my other half and or my partner, whatever you want to, however you want to word it. But I think that's where you can really, really get into the nitty gritty. Um, but then obviously it saves you hurt and all the other stuff. That's but what I, I was looking but at. But I think we need the hurt in our world to be able do, to grow. But let's look at something logically. The people you've dated, not every single one of them, but let's look at the people you've dated. I guarantee if you were to sit down with yourself, and, and you knew, you're like, yeah, I like him, but he's not a good fit for me. You knew it. It was in there somewhere. But you still move forward with it anyways. Yeah, I have had a relationship that, like that. But that's what when I mean. I was, like you knew. Like you but when knew. I was younger, I didn't understand any of this when oh, I was younger, sure. Michael. So, it, like, when I met someone, I was, like, 25, um, I know that might seem like an adult kind of stage in the world, but for me, at 25 in the dating world wasn't, I was still very naive, maybe you were very, still very childlike. Green. I was, yeah. So, but when I met this particular person, man, he was, he was definitely for me. And I thought for, I never thought for one second mm. that he wouldn't be a very long term. It wasn't until time when maybe even I think it was even a couple of years in that everything just took its own turn mm -hmm. um but the first couple of years were oh we had the best couple of years that we could have ever had as a couple um and I would never have thought and he would never have thought I don't think I don't know I, I can't speak for him but I know that I never thought for one second that it wasn't going to go any further than like a three and a half year relationship. Um, Cause like I said, the first two years we done everything we wanted to do. We were like, a, yeah, we were a great couple. So well, yeah, the reason that, why I make I that statement, it's because I call it acute level of awareness. Now we all have people it's happened, but I guess the point I'm really trying to make is people still continue in that cycle. Yeah, people do. They people still do. continue in that cycle of still entertaining the, the wrong person. people, either it's yeah. friends, either it's um, dating, they're still under, and it's like, I get what you're saying. We all need those experiences, but when do the experiences stop where it comes to the point to say, I have a clear idea now? Yeah, I think you only need a couple, really. I think exactly. You need, uh, yeah, I don't think you need to go through like 15 or something like that. Exactly. But, at that point, yeah. it's like, that's a choice at that point. Yeah, it is a choice at that point, absolutely. Um, it is a choice, yeah, for sure. But, you know, I don't know. There it's has funny, to be a isn't cutoff it? Line. There has to be a cutoff line where it's like, now you're choosing this. Yeah, to absolutely. Your own to, to your own volition, to your choosing to disturb your peace, to your own volition. Yeah. And it's not about, yeah, it's definitely, we definitely have to take notice and really look at who we're meeting and understand from, from the start, is this, you got to really ask yourself, you got to really get to know as much as you can about the other person, as in where they're going, who they're about, what they're about, what they, you know, I think always ask that question, where do you see yourself in five years? That too, like, 
I'm gonna tell you guys like like a story. We'll do like a little bit of story. I wish I had like the story time button. Uh, well, I have a little bit of a story time button. <laughs> um, I met the perfect girl. And I mean, like, no girl is perfect, but I'm saying, like, she was everything that is I was looking for. Um, and then I was like, okay, like, I could totally see myself with her. She's cool. But then one thing threw me off. And after that, I was like, I don't need to entertain this anymore. And this is what I'm talking about, a heightened level of awareness. She smokes marijuana. It's not something I do. So inviting that into my life would be a problem. Yeah. Because you see, my peace would be disturbed because it's not something I do. It's not something that I want my future partner engaged with. So imagine how that conversation would go if I was like, you know what? All those other things are, she checks off all those other boxes. It's just this one thing. And then I still go out with her and I'm like, babe, you know, I don't really like you smoking marijuana. She's so like, but you, yeah, yeah. You, you, you met me this way. Yes, exactly, exactly. And that's trying to change somebody. At the end of the day, that's what she wants to do. Uh, that nobody has the right to turn around and say you can't do that. Just don't need to be part of it. But see, I walked away. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I walked and that's away. That's strength and that's wisdom. And you could never have done that had no. you not had those other relationships, Michael. If that makes sense, I, I would really, never have known I, to do that. I said to myself, like, no, like, yeah, she's cool. She's great. But I said, no, nah, like that for me is a deal breaker. And that's the thing. When it comes to protecting your peace, you have to enforce your deal breakers. Yes. If it means walking away from something or someone for the greater good, which is your peace, do it. Yeah, it's your negotiables and non-negotiables, right? Yeah, do it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I totally agree with that, Michael. And it's so true. You don't have to just it. do it. Don't question it. Just don't move argue on. With it. Just say, yeah, it's going to suck, but I will be better for it. Yeah, for sure. Because for I've sure. always said this, and like that's the thing. I think a lot of times we try to rationalize why to keep someone around. Because I've had girlfriends and friends and say, oh, but, you know, we get along so well. But, you know, he wants a Christian background or she wants X, Y, Z. And it's like, right off the bat, how are you guys compatible? If he wants a Christian household and you don't, that's going to be a problem in the future. Of course it is. And people think, oh, no, we will deal with it. We'll get around it. Mm -hmm. We'll find it. But then someone's mm -hmm. going to have to um, give in to their values and their morals mm -hmm. and their ways and actually why and they go oh because i love them well you should love no. yourself more than you should love somebody else put yourself first because no matter what and i so you know no matter what it's gonna come to a point where there's gonna be resentment it's going to happen you can't stop that because you're putting yourself you're putting someone else before your wants and needs. Well, that relationship's going to be chaotic. Like when you look at it from a vision point of view, your painting of what you want it to look like instead of looking at it at the reality is when it comes to that, you guys are on two different spectral planes. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm trying to say. It's the same thing with me. If I would have dated the girl that, that smoked marijuana, we're on two different spectral planes. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't, it doesn't work. And that goes for anything, guys. Like, not just those things. Like, let's say, for example, you're into healing crystals and you're into tarot card reading and your partner's not, just leave it alone. Yeah, for sure. Leave for it sure. alone. Because the thing is, you are painting a vision of what you want it to be. Where they're like, they don't do tarot cards. They don't do uh, crystals. You're painting a vision of how you want them to be. Yeah. And they're never going to be that. Yeah. Look at what somebody is about and actually take it for what it is exactly. and believe it. Like, and if you, maybe you want to tap into that, maybe you don't, but yeah. if you do and you're happy to go and explore that, then that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I um, agree. yeah, but then if you really go, no, nah, it's not for me, then why would you get with someone that wants to do that, but you don't? They, they and so many people go, yeah, but we've got a great connection, nope. like you said, right? Nope. But we get on so well. Yeah, you get on so well, but how far is getting on well going to take you? For when five you years don't, or, or yeah, three years. exactly. When you've got different interests and different ways. So when that person wants to go to the tarot reading or do the tarot reading on the crystals, yeah, and they want to go four times a week 
and mm. you don't want nothing to do with that. So what, you're not going to see your partner this four times a week? You're just happy with that? Like, you know, you've got to really think about how does that look, you know? Exactly. And that's you disturbing your peace. And we'll give them another example. Let's say you meet someone and they're totally open to being in an open relationship and you're not. Yeah. But you guys get along great, though. Yeah. Everything is wonderful. But then yeah. imagine you date that person and then they start seeing someone else and you. Trust me, you're going to feel a completely different way. Absolutely. 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 You can't know. You you have to be on the same page. You have to be going in some sort of the same direction in some way or another. You can't rationalize it. That's yeah. That, right? Don't don't right if if they're if when you're looking at your piece, because as Anthea said, you have to put yourself first. You have to ask yourself, if I entertain this person, friendship, whatever it may be, is it going to disturb my peace at some point? Yeah. And don't lie to yourself. Exactly. Is it going to make my life more complicated or is it going to make my life more easy? Mm. That's Absolutely. very simple. It's not a hard question. No, it's not. It's because actually it's very it. simple, isn't it, most of it, this? It is because, as you said, you have to look at who they are now, not the vision you've painted in your mind, but who they are in front of you. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and that goes for anything, like protecting your pieces, even at your job. Do you know what? Business. You took the words out of my mouth just there. I was about to I was, say yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that. It's so true because you can, you know, how you could, if you go into work and nothing is resonating, yes, it's the job that you want, but everyone there, you just don't see eye to eye with them. You can't seem to get on the same, you know, you're not, you're just not compatible in any way in that, in that environment. How long are you going to stay there and disturb your peace? Cause you're going to come to a point where you're going to feel like I, you're going to wake up in the morning. I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. I don't like it. And then your all your focus has gone on to things that you're just feeling shitty about and you don't want to do that to yourself. Like protect yourself from this. If it's not a good environment, then go go find somewhere that works for you, you know? Or just minimize it in the workplace because you might have to work with them. Just talk to them as very little as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Give the conversation as very little time as possible. But, you know, this is why we're telling you guys these things. And I'm sure that you hear it on other channels and stuff. But, you know, we're giving it from the men and women point of view and helping you guys understand that it and I really want to do an episode on this why being a nice guy doesn't serve you because okay. I think a lot of men fall short in trying to be a nice guy and I think that and I, and I think a follow-up episode should be us about us doing about people pleasing yeah people pleasing is a massive one it's a massive one you know what I was going to say I um, um, met someone of late and um, we were talking and and then after a certain period of time I said well I'm not looking for a relationship um, I don't want a committed relationship See so I knew know. straight away then that gets wiped off my like I say off my list but you, you know what I mean I it, mean, it, it like, gets my pushed list. out of your like orbit yeah it's like <laughs> I was, yeah, it didn't come out right. So yeah, it was like I knew, okay, you know, that's not what you want. Um, and I said, that's what I would like a, I actually want a committed relationship. So yeah, it was, I knew that that was definitely not for me. Um, didn't mean I didn't like the person, didn't mean that we didn't get on. We get on at the end of the day. We have, you know, we have great conversations, but, it's not, but he's not looking for what I want. Why would I entertain that long term? I don't need I to do that. I agree. And, and see, that's what I'm trying to say. It's always, see, that's why I love life and meeting different people in different interactions. Because even yesterday, I met somebody, not on a romantic level, but like I met a girl and she was very attractive. Uh, she had a boyfriend, but the story gets interesting. So I met her and she goes, she's going to McDonald's to get her boyfriend food. And I'm like, wow, that's really nice of you. She's like, what, the women in your area don't do that? I'm like, no, you ask for certain things. It's like they're going to fight you on it. So this, because they were visiting in the area that I work in, 
her boyfriend was just like, oh, man, I'm really hungry. She's like, babe, don't worry about it. Just sit right here. I'm going to go get you some food. She went out to go get a McDonald's and bring it. And I'm like, see, uh, and I told her to her face. I'm like, you are a very peaceful person. You didn't argue with him, say, make it yourself. I don't care if you're hungry. You were just very serving. Mm. And I said, we need more of that. And she's like, wow, like, I never thought about it that way. She's like, it's just natural to me. And I was like, we need more of that in, in like the dating sphere. But obviously they're in a committed relationship. You see that yes. there's a difference. There's, they're in a committed relationship. So again, that's why I'm trying to say is you see Anthea's story was great about just walking away. It's just sometimes you just got to walk away. Um, and then my story was great because it's just understanding that, you know, if two peaceful people can come together, it just increases the peace. Yeah. And I just want to add to that as well. You know, this person was, should we say, chatting me up, coming, approaching me. So I could have taken that and been like, oh, you know, he's giving me attention yeah. and he likes me. Yeah, he does like me. And I think he's a great guy too. But you don't want what I want. So why am I going to entertain He only wants you for that? other things. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not here for that. So um so yeah but like i said you know so many people would have or maybe i actually would say before maybe go back a few years i might have thought oh yeah eventually he'll change his mind yeah, I see. you know i just don't think like that anymore it's just yeah because you're, you're not willing to compromise or disturb your peace absolutely absolutely so guys we won't keep you any longer um i'll be doing the last live stream tomorrow um and I'm really looking forward to doing that one with you guys. Uh, let me tell you guys what that one is. Um, it will be an evening show. Um, and I'm really looking forward to do it, to doing it. I always look forward to doing our episodes. Um, so that one for you guys is five types of people who will do you wrong. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Cool. So, I'm, it's probably going to be a uh, shared video. Um, I think it will be great. And as I said, guys, please like, share, subscribe, help us grow the channel. Because um, after this week, we're going to try to fine tune it to make it more engaging and more easier for you guys to like, share, and subscribe to the content. All right. So with that being said, have a fantastic evening, and we will see you guys in a week and a half. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching and listening. <laughs> see you later.